Here is our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Many of the fortunes of America have been founded by people from foreign lands, by fathers and mothers who worked long and hard night and day, usually aided by their children. Our play tonight, House of Strangers, is the story of such a family, a family who maintained an unbroken front to the world, but who, behind their closed doors, became a house of strangers to each other. And as our stars of this highly dramatic 20th century Fox picture... We have the versatile Miss Ann Baxter, Richard Conte, recreating his splendid film performance, and Thomas Gomez, adding his fine talent to the House of Strangers. Now, here's House of Strangers, starring Ann Baxter as Irene Bennett, Richard Conte as Max Manetti, and Thomas Gomez as Gino Manetti. <laughs> A few hours ago, a man named Max Monetti walked out of prison. He came directly to New York, to the Italian section. There, he stopped at a bank owned by his three brothers. The reunion was brief, strained, ominous. And then Max went uptown to make another call. I thought you'd phone me, Max. I was waiting all day for you to phone me. Saturday night. How come you're not out? Nobody asked me. There always was your trouble, Irene. I guess you've been alone every night. Nobody's that unpopular. Who with? Just name. Anyone to kill time with. You've had a lot of time to kill. Seven years. Have you seen your brothers? I had to see them before anything. Vengeance is a rare wine, a joy divine, says the Arab. I'm going to get drunk on it. Where did you pick that up? Some philosopher in the death house? How do you expect me to be? Full of jokes? Then you've come back a fool. Check. I was the smartest of them all. Where did it get me? Us. You and me and everything we waited for. Max, let's leave tonight. You can start again, whatever you want. What I want is right here in New York. Killing? Is that what you've planned for seven years? A vendetta? That's how I killed time. What about me? I was in jail for seven years. I was in a bigger jail. I was in a jail the size of the world. You'll have to wait a little longer. I've done my last night's waiting, Max. I have two tickets on a plane to San Francisco. You'll have one empty seat. It's now or never, Max. You mustn't threaten an Italian that doesn't mix well in our blood. Am I on your list, too? Isn't it enough to destroy your brothers and yourself? All this for your father. For a dead man, an evil man, a bad man. You're filled with his poison that breathes in you. The world's better off with your father dead, but you're not. Good boy. Your father would have liked that. Slap her in the face. Hit the truth because it hurts. Hate, Max. Hate. Don't ever love. Listen to your dead father. Max, wait. Where did Max go after he left us at the bank? What are you so nervous about, Pietro? We know where he went, huh, Joe? I hired a man to follow him, to watch him. Well, why don't you tell me? Why you got to keep secrets? That girl's apartment, Irene Bennett. He left. Then he went to the house. He must have kept the key. The house? Why? We told him the house is empty. Maybe he forgot that Mama moved out. Then where? Where is he now? He's still there. Maybe we should have offered him more. A thousand dollars. That's nothing. We've been all through that. We made up our minds, didn't we? Yeah, he kept saying how worried we looked. Trying to scare us, that's all. I'm through being scared. Only one thing. What's he doing in the house? Listen to my dead father, she said. All right, Pop, here I am. Here in your house again. Nothing touched, everything the same. The rug is on the floor, the furniture... They didn't even take your picture down. Still on the wall, big as life. Gino Minetti. Done in oils by a fine, expensive artist. Well, Pop, I'm back. Nothing's happened to my memory. I remember fine. Even the day when it all started. That morning at the bank, everybody waiting to get into your office to see you. People coming to you for help. They're calling about the bond, Pa, the, the export company. You don't hear me, Joe? I say not now. Forced to take care of my friends. Hey, Luca, Luca. You want to see me? Come on in. 
Yeah. No, 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 just speak English. How many times I tell you? All right, in English, you know, I'm still in need of some money to buy one horse. What for you need a horse? Uh, the old one, she's a die. She no can pick up a junk. How much it cost to one no horse? A hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, I'll loan you. Here, sign the paper. Oh, that's the grass. Hey, uh, that, that, that fellow from Chicago is on the phone. He wants to know if you'll renew on the brewery. I tell him myself. Hello. This is Gino Monetti. No. Excuse me, Mr. Gino. This money is only $120. Well, sure. Interest, Luca. Interest. I take out in advance. You go now. And this time you buy a more strong horse. Advance. This is a thing I don't understand in English. Mrs. Cassini, come in. Come in the office, Mrs. Cassini. Can I see? <laughs> How is your husband? The doctor say I got to send him to Denver or he dies. Denver? That's a long trip. That's in the Kansas, you know. How much it cost? Train cost sixty two dollars. Yeah, sit down. Hey, Tony, Pietro, come here. Hey, what happened to your nose? Huh? I've won last night, Pa. By a knockout, second round, Pa. How much do you get? Oh, I can't take money, Pa. It would hurt my amateur standing. No money? Then why you price a fight? Well, it, it's sport, Pa. Oh, you fight too now, eh, Tony? No, I'm his manager. Yeah, he's also sport, huh? Out, out, go to work. Okay, Pop, okay. <laughs> two sports I got, Mrs. Cassini. Here, take the money. Oh, is it too much, Mr. Monet? So I make a mistake. I, I sign a paper. No, 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 don't got no paper. You take the money and go to Kansas. Go, go. Oh. Grazie. Uh, I just got to see you again. Look over there. Go on, look. What I look at. You got to make Max get an office somewhere else. Look at those men waiting for him. Bums. Thieves, probably. Max, uh, bring in a good business. Bail bonds for criminals? After all, Pa, Max is a lawyer. We're running a bank. We run a bank? Since when are we? I am the bank. Go on, back to your cage. Hey, you, you. Who, me? Hey, no free ink here. You want to fill the fountain of pen? You go to the post office. Hey, Pietro. Yeah, Pa? You're supposed to be bank guard, eh? You wear a uniform. Sure, Pa. I got it on. Then see what this young lady wants, eh? Huh? Oh, I didn't see her come in, Pa. Uh, yes, ma'am. Can I help you? Where will I find Mr. Minetti? We've got lots of Minettis here. My father, my brother, Joe, no, Tony. No, which one is the lawyer? Oh, you mean Max. That's his office over there. Thank you. You ever think to knock before you come in? I haven't got time. My name's Irene Bennett. You were recommended by the firm of Hanford and Sloan. That's a very high-class firm. I used to work for them. They don't recommend many clients to me unless... Unless what? Unless they're low class. Where do your clients sit down? They don't, period. Thanks. Anyway, a friend of mine is in trouble with the police. What did he do? What makes you say he? You don't look like you'd go to all this trouble for a woman. What did he do? A lot of things. Bad checks. He took some jewelry. Someone else's car. What's he to you? I just told you. A friend. Mm. The car and the jewelry? Yours, huh? Yes. All you've got to worry about are the bad checks. Why not just make them good? No, it's too late. They were turned over to the district attorney. What do you want me to do? I'll give you my check to cover them. And your fee. Yes. This should clear things up. Money is a great cleanser. This check. It was expensive, huh? He was worth it. Well, maybe to you, but not to me. What's wrong? I'm a lawyer, not a garbage man. You think you can skip through life with a checkbook? Opens and closes all the doors, huh? I'm not that hard up. Take your business somewhere else, period. That's a pretty insulting little speech. That's what I had in mind. But it didn't take. You can't insult women. You're not the type. No? No. From you, they love it. Now, look, I'm tired and I'm bored with this mess. Will you take my case? After what I said? Especially after what you said. Say please. I'll pay my way, thanks. Say please. Please. Okay, I'll take the case. My address is on the check. Let me know how you make out. Yeah, sure. You, you busy, Max? No, come in, Joe. Smell the air in here. Perfume. They sell that kind of drop at a time. You've got to have a doctor's prescription, like chloroform. It gets in your brain. Who was she? A dame. How's things at home, Joe? Max, you remember Pa promised to give me a raise after Elaine and I got married? Hasn't he done it? No, and Elaine's getting pretty sore. How can we entertain on $65 a week? 
After all, she comes from a very fine Philadelphia family. Take her downtown, buy her a new dress, charge it to me. The first time she came in the bank and saw me behind that cage like a common clerk, she almost cried. She's very sensitive. You mean impatient. Slow her down, Joe. You're going to take over someday. The whole bank's going to be yours. So all you've got to do is wait. That's the way Pa treats me. I notice he doesn't talk to you like that. Nobody talks to me like that. But I'm the oldest. I'm a married man. Okay, okay, I'll talk to him. Uh, tonight, Max? It's Wednesday, you know. We're coming over for dinner. Yeah, tonight. See you later, pal. Joe, doesn't your father ever turn that phonograph off? But Elaine, honey, you know how he likes music. Hmm. How much longer do we have to wait for dinner? I don't know. Who came in before? Maria and her mother. Well, then. Max isn't here. Max? Why aren't we ever late? Why doesn't he ever wait for us? What do you want me to do? Start a fight? Yes. You're talking too loud. I like to hear music, not talk. Do we have to wait for Max Bob? What's your hurry? Well, we're we're expecting after dinner guests at our place. Well, why you don't bring them here? We got plenty to eat, lots of room. My friends don't happen to like spaghetti. No. I'm getting a little tired of it myself. So? Yeah. Me too. Making you feel bad to this stomach, eh? Frankly, yes. You too, Joe? Uh, yes, Pa. Well, I'll tell you something. Every Wednesday, you come here, Max's girl Maria, she come here, and Maria's mom. Everybody eat your mama's spaghetti, but you get sick, huh? That's uh, too bad. Only you don't come. You go find job in some other bank. Oh, that's a fine thing to say. Now, come in the living room like everybody else. Hey, Pietro, you don't hear music stop? Put on another record, dumbhead. Huh? Oh, yeah, Pa. Hey, Pa, can I get Maria some wine? Maria can have anything she wants, Tony. Only what her mama say. I say I don't like a man coming late for dinner before he's married. But Max is busy, Mama. All the time, Max is busy. <laughs> busy. Sorry, I'm late, everybody. What did you do, wait for me? Oh, hey, Max, oh, my boy. Mother Domenico, you're looking bigger and better every day. Maria. My dearest Maria. No kisses, only on the hand. We're engaged, aren't we? Sure, it's a fun to get a kiss daily. Now, don't you remember? Not until after the marriage. Then it's no more fun. Hey, Mama, we go in dining room. Max is home. Everybody sit down. I come right away. <laughs> Max, you, you won't forget what we talked about. We'll get it over with right now. No, no, not in front of everybody. Hey, Pa, how about giving Joe a raise? He works hard. The bank's doing good. So you want a raise, eh, Joe? Well, we don't have to talk about it now, Pa. Why not? A raise, huh? When first I get married, I make a $15 a week. I have a four kids, all the boys. How many you got, Mrs. Joe? I wouldn't raise a child in a two-room apartment. Oh. Well, we all live in a one room, back of barber shop. I work a seven day a week, a 16 hour a day. Never sit down. You're sitting down now, Paul. All Joe wants is a few more bucks like you promised him. I promise. When, Joe, when? You don't even remember? At the wedding. Oh, the wedding. <laughs> All the wine, I don't even remember who gets married. <laughs> uh, Joe, when I die, you get all the dollars. The bank is for you, for Tony, for Pietro. All the dollars when I die. I hope everybody has good appetite. See? Like always. Spaghetti. Uh, <laughs> nothing in the world, Mama, smells better than your spaghetti. Uh, me, 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 okay, so, <laughs> uh, a good cook is like a musician who would play violin. <laughs> Pietro, dumbhead, answer the phone. Yes, Papa. The world is full of good cooks and a good violinist, but there are very few artists. The plates, everybody, pass the plate. For you, Max, telephone. Excuse me, Mama. Excuse me, Maria. Just a little for me, too. You try not to think about it, Mrs. Joe. Maybe you don't get to see. Hello? Who? Oh, Miss Bennett. Yeah, it's all been taken care of. Something new? My fee is double for night calls. Okay, I'll be right over. Well, looks like I gotta leave. If I don't get back, Tony, take Maria to the show. Me? Yeah, yeah, sure, Max. Where you gotta go? Business, Pa, business. I'll miss you, Maria. Business? My daughter Maria comes first. Un momento, please, un momento. Si? Mrs. Domenico, first comes my son, Max. Second, his profession. Third comes Maria. Now, maybe we eat, huh? <laughs> Hey, Pietro, watch the record, dumbhead. Waste any time, 
I'm getting here. I like that. Some apartment, Miss Bennett. Looks like you're going to afford a lot of trouble. I've got chairs for my lawyers to sit in. Pick anyone you like. I haven't had dinner. I'm hungry. How about a drink first? I thought you said you were in trouble. You don't just talk to people, do you? You cross-examine them. I'm a lawyer. Sympathy you get from doctors and relatives. I don't want sympathy from anybody. Don't worry. You're not likely to get it. Thanks so much. Look, you said it was something very important. Well, it's not easy to find the right word. Well, start looking, will you? I'm no good at mind reading. You're a thoroughly unpleasant young man, aren't you? But a wonderful lawyer. The facts. Well, it seems that a friend of mine... Another friend? I have several, you know. Oh, as long as your dough holds out, why not? That's insulting. Maybe. I'm hungry. That excuses it, huh? What about your friend? You and your insults. Why don't you stop trying? The friend. It's a girl this time. Believe it or not. She's in San Francisco. That's my home. She just called. It's a long, involved mess. You'd probably have to go out there. Did she ask you to get hold of me? Oh, no, of course not. But it's occurred to me... Well, what's the mess about? Well, I couldn't possibly explain it. It's got to do with trust funds, her father's estate, all sorts of complications. Oh, I see. I'm supposed to hop a plane with a letter of introduction, right? Oh, I'll probably go out there, too. Oh, so we'd hop the plane together. If I can spare the time. Do you have an empty bottle, Miss Bennett? What for? If we're going to play games, let's make it a kissing game. Spin the bottle. It's much more fun. The words are hard to find, I told you. I don't belong to the California bar. You're smart enough to know that. And I'm smart enough to know that there is no friend. That estate is yours, isn't it? Yes. And no legal complications. Then you don't need a lawyer. Well, I have other complications. What goes with you anyway? At the moment, I'm lonesome. I've resigned from the Lonely Hearts Club. Yes, your fee is double at night. You made that perfectly clear. Well, I'll get my wrap. You going someplace? We're going out. Forget the wrap and sit down. Why? I'm going to give you a short history of Max Minetti. Born on the east side and back of my old man's barbershop. Today he owns a bank and clips coupons instead of hair. But I still like the smell of garlic and red wine. I'm engaged to a beautiful Italian girl. She can give me kids and make me a home. She knows only one man. Me, Max Minetti, period. Don't you want to know about me? I know about you. You're lonesome. What else? You like to get hurt. It's a sickness with a lot of women. Always looking for a new way to get hurt by a new man. Get smart. There hasn't been a new man since Adam. Maybe you're a great lawyer. As a psychiatrist, you stink. One man's opinion. Nothing hurts me. That's one of my complications. Max. It's a good name. I like it. It's not guaranteed for long wear. I don't wear anything for long. Let's go. Where? Anywhere. Are you fast? No, Count. Not at all. Come on, let's go to some other spot. I'm tired of dancing. I like it here. Or are you troubled? Maybe that's why you're getting so jumpy. Maybe it's that beautiful Italian girl you're engaged to. Yeah, I'm worried. Don't I look it? When do you see her? She'll have me the rest of her life. Oh, that's quite a sentence. No time off for good behavior? She's none of your business. And what about your time off for bad behavior? That's my business, isn't it? What are you suddenly being sore about? What do you expect me to be? And it's not sudden. Do you think women live in vacuum-sealed containers like tennis balls? I just thought you were different, that's all. Well, you'd love to find one, wouldn't you? Get smart. There hasn't been a woman in love different since Eve. So it's love. I don't know. It's got all the symptoms. Embarrassing, isn't it? I, I just don't like complications. Well, I'll simplify it for you. I'm going now. And alone. Well, maybe that's a good idea. Good night, Matt. Good night, Miss Bennett. It's been nice knowing you. You are listening to the Broadway Playhouse. Act two will begin in just a moment. In the Declaration of Independence, we find these words... All men are created equal. Does that mean all men develop equally? Does it mean all men have equal ability? Not in your life. You know as well as I do. A man who's a top-notch mechanic might be a miserable failure if he tries to make the grade as a draftsman. When it comes to talent and ability, there are some things you can do very well, but 
then again, there are other things you never could do, no matter how long or how hard you tried. When you boil it all down, what do we believe? We believe that all men are created equal, that each person is of importance and value as an individual, that all men should enjoy personal freedom. In short, we believe that all men are created with equal opportunity, endowed by their creator with the sacred rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But we know that these principles of freedom require protection by man himself. So we have set down these principles in our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, and other laws of our land. And as Americans, each one of us takes the personal responsibility for respecting and protecting the freedom of our fellow man. As Americans, we know that freedom is everybody's business. We return you now to Mr. William Keeley. Act Two of House of Strangers, starring Anne Baxter as Irene, Richard Conte as Max, and Thomas Gomez as Zeno. <laughs> Max Manetti has spent seven long years in prison. Today, he was freed. He's called on his three brothers at the bank, on the girl, Irene. And now, in the large, old, empty house where his family once lived, Max Manetti contemplates the past, when his father was alive, when Irene Bennett entered his life. Where do we go now, Irene? Another nightclub? What about that place we went to last week? No. No. And I'm sick of arguing with you. I'm going home. You're heading the wrong way. I know it. I'm a girl with a great sense of direction. And let go of me, that hurts. What's all this about? Just that I'm beginning to know you. I don't like what I see. You were in love with me. What happened to that? Nothing's happened to it. Yet. Who's the other guy? There isn't any. You're talking to me, Max Manetti. Who is he? That's all you can think of. The only reason I could possibly leave you was for somebody else. Nothing could be wrong with you, could there? What are you looking for? This is 1932, New York, the jungle. It's a dog-eat dog and the first fight counts. Just whom are you fighting, Max? Me or yourself? It's beginning to hurt and you can't take it. Why should I take it? I'm not going to get hurt, especially not by you. Just so you can play dog-eat dog in a jungle. Look, things are the same with us as they always were. Not with me, they're not. I don't understand you anymore. You don't understand anybody. You've never tried. You love Max Monetti and he loves you. No questions asked. You're going to marry Maria. She'll give you kids, a home. What will you give her? What have you got to give her? You finished? I'm finished. Then let's eat. I'm hungry. Just like that. Just like that. I keep forgetting you live in a jungle. Then come quietly, baby. There's a speakeasy just around the corner. You sure you don't want a drink? No. But enjoy yourself. It's our last night. Have fun. You can turn it on or off, can't you? Character, that's what you've got. Plenty of character. You'd like to see me fall on my face and beg. You'd like that, wouldn't you? You never will. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. Max Manetti can... Period. There's an epitaph for you. Here lies Max Manetti. Period. Who are you going to take up with after me? That's one thing I don't worry about. It worries me. Why? Because I'll be thinking about it. And I don't like what I'll be thinking. Ice. I kiss you and it's like ice. You feel better now? Worse, I feel rotten. I'll take you home. Boy, you're loaded with character tonight. Wait a minute, I'm out of cigarettes. Hey, waiter. Got any cigarettes? Don't sell cigarettes. We haven't got a license. You've got a nice place here. Lots of atmosphere. Full of characters. Yeah. Compliments of the house. Thanks. Your lady friend's leaving. She left me six days ago. How about a drink? The best thing is Turkish bath. You feel good already, eh? You got troubles. I got the troubles, too. Turkish bath fixes both. More steam, Pa. Okay. Yeah, sweat it out. That's the way Max is. Sweat it out. I'm beat, Pa. Really beat. A smart boy. Let a woman do this to you. Well, soon you marry Maria. You forget this woman. How do you forget? What do you do? Sweat it out. Good thing you come with me, Max. I got trouble at the bank. She can't leave me. I won't let her leave me. I'll go bust her door down. Questions, they ask. What is this money? Where is this money? How you get this? Why you do that? Ah, uh, she'll come crawling. You're right, Pa. Forget. 
I'll marry Maria. Twenty years I run the bank, Max, and never have no trouble. No one asks me nothing. I throw them out. That's what I do. Throw them out. What are you talking about? The bank. Two, three men. From a government, they say. They look into my books. They ask all the time questions of questions. Well, you've got the answers, haven't you? Uh, have I? Why, you think I'm a sweating? <laughs> It's you. Yeah, it's me. Come in. I've been waiting all week for your call. What made you think I'd call? Still making with the character, is that it? What do you want, Max? Why'd you come here? I lost something. I thought maybe I'd find it here. Your umbrella? My girl. Nothing of that description has been turned in. You might try the city pound. I'm in no mood for jokes. How about a shock? How's your heart? Come on inside. Danny, this is Max Manetti. I told you about him. Yes, I remember it. Glad to see you, Mr. Manetti. Get out of here, mister. Blow. <laughs> doesn't he approve of me? It doesn't look like it, does it, darling? Are you leaving or am I throwing you out? Now, just a minute. I can handle this, Irene. Easy. So can I. For once in his life, he's not going to have things his way. This isn't Mulberry Street, Max, and you're no longer Il Duce. You're not giving orders. You're not even wanted here. Danny and I are getting married. It's still being done, you know, outside the jungle. Well, you heard her. Look, sucker. She's in love with me. She knows it, and I know it, and you ought to. She's making a chump out of you. Look who's calling who, chump. Get out of here, Max. Get out. Just like that. Just like that. Strange kind of finish for us, baby. All right, I'll go. But remember, you're stuck. I'll remember, too, when you come crawling back. Period. Oh, wait a minute. What for? Your father's been calling here all day. I, I don't know what it is. Something about the bank. I thought you'd better know. Thanks. aren't even recorded. I, I didn't keep the records. Pa did. In his head. In his vest pocket. In the back of envelopes. I, I just stayed in my cage. Pa, have you read the new banking act? I don't even read the old one. Why? Well, we might as well face it. It's called usury and misapplication of funds. Smart lawyer like you, Max. You, you ought to be able to find a fix somewhere. This is the state government. Square apples all the way down the line. They don't fix, period. I think we can save the bank. In fact, it's good they closed us up. Lots of banks are having runs. This gives us a chance to liquidate and start over with a clean slate. I sell the house. I sell automobile, furniture, diamond ring. Everybody get the paid back. But that only saves the bank, Pa. How do we pull you through? How? Me and my four sons, we find the way. Yes, it's possible we can split it up. You, Joe, Tony, Pietro. Divided responsibility. Nobody knows who did just what. 
nothing definite they can pin on any single one of you. How about it, Joe? It'll be easier on par that way. Oh, but I never had enough responsibility to divide. What do you say? I say I'm a clerk. I get $65 a week. Not enough to go to jail for. What's that got to do with it? Joe, Gino Monetti, he don't ask nothing from no clerk. Not when I got the four sons to help me. You, my oldest son. Since when? You mean I've been around the longest, that's all. More time to wait on you like a servant. Pushed down, humiliated. Since when have I been your son? So, for a few more dollar a week, I could have a good son in you, eh, Joe? The first time I learned this. You, Pietro, how much you want to be my son? Joe said it for me. What was I ever to you? A dumbhead. Ever since I was a kid, dumbhead, dumbhead. Who's going to pay any attention to a dumbhead? To a god in a bank. If I was not your father, you would not even be God. You don't want to study. Four or five school, they throw you out. All the time, a price of fighting. That's all you're good for. Yes, dumbhead. Tony. No, no don't get me wrong, Pa. I don't want to see anything happen to you, but, but I don't want to stick my neck out. Why not? What's so good about your neck? Well, well, it's just that... Well, how do I know it's as easy as Max said? And if anything goes wrong, I won't know what... The doctor just telephoned. He come by in one hour. Ah, uh, doctor. You're just in time, Mama. Did you know you brought up a house full of strangers? Uh, is it true? Strangers. For who do you think I build the bank, huh? For who do you think I work and the build? For me? For Mama? We cannot live long enough to spend what we got long time ago... For what, then? For my sons. For you, Joe. It's good I pay you little. Then you know what is to be poor. You remember when you're rich. Pietro, I call you dumbhead. It's good I call you dumbhead. Muscles is not something to be proud of. Gorilla got the muscles bigger than anybody else. Maybe you learn to use your brain. And you, Tony, weak. All the time, dress up a clothes of girls. Everything but the bank. The bank of Gino Monetti and his sons. Uh, now I have a strangers. Go on. Get out. Gino. Get out. We'll beat it without them, Pa. I'll get some sleep. We've got a lot to do tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mama, you don't cry, Mama. We have plenty good time again. Soon, Max, he fix everything like he say. Then you and me, we take a little trip, eh? Palermo. You like once more to go back, Mama? I wish we never leave old country, Gino. Oh, don't say that. We have nothing there. Here we got everything. Here we got nothing. What do you mean? This is a fine big house. A money, servants, diamond necklace. You call this nothing? We poor, Gino. When we only have barber shop, we rich. We love each other. The boys, you, me. Now is no more love. It's only hate. Italian banker indicted. Faces speedy trial. Fate tracks down the Manetti. Charges 22 violations. Gone to defend banker. Prosecutor asking for maximum sentence. through, Mr. Manetti. Now, most of the people who live on the east side are poor, aren't they? Yes and no. Exactly. Depending on whether they lend money or borrow it. You know how hard it is for these people just to make a living? It's not easy, no. Then how could you ever expect them to pay the exorbitant rates of interest you've been charging? Oh, I wait. In no hurry. I wait until they have it. Most of them never have it. But the interest goes on and on and on. How many homes have you foreclosed? How many salaries have you gone ashamed? I instruct the witness not to answer these questions. The facts are all in the bank record. I answer everything. I'm not afraid. But the questions are improper. You don't have to answer Let them. Let him ask. I tell. I got nothing to hide. You say you loan money on people, not collateral. When you foreclose on collateral, all you take away is a man's property. But when you garnish a man's wages, you take his sweat, his blood, the bread out of his children's mouths. You call that helping people? I call it usury. A disgrace to every decent Italian-American. Uh, just a minute, please. You don't talk like that to Gino. No one talk to Gino like that. Sit down, Pa. Shut up. Please. You, you shut up. He's a free country. I should like to remind the defendant and his attorney 
that this is a court of law. But, Your Honor, the defendant is not aware of the implications... The defendant of... appears not only willing to speak, he demands to be heard. I, I say only this to judge, to lawyers, to people. I do what I think is right. And what I think is right is right. I don't care what anybody says. Not you, not you, not you. I, Gino Monetti, no one telling me what to do. <laughs> I thought it best if we met here, Joe, instead of home. No point in getting in Mama any more, more upset than she is. Well, what do you think? Well, the old man's just asking for it. He acts like he's crazy. I can't let him get back on the stand tomorrow. He'll rip him to pieces. How can you stop it? Well, I've got an idea. It's a long shot. It's dangerous. I think we've got one of the jurors on our side. Only once the other 11 start working on us, she'll never hold out. Go on. The idea is to see that she does hold out. How? Well, somebody's got to get to her. With cash. Talk to her now, tonight. Is this the secret of Max Minetti's success? Excuse me while I drink my beer. Well, who's going to talk to that juror? Not me. Tony and Pietro aren't smart enough. You're smart enough. I thought of that. I may not be able to get near her. If she turns me down, the old man will really be nailed. You, she doesn't know. What do you say? I've said it many times, but I'll tell you once again. The old man got himself in. Let him get himself out. Thanks, Joe. This time, I'll remember. Sure. Good luck, man. Waiter, give me the check. Sure, Mr. Minetti. Only there's a girl just come in. She wants to see you. Got a minute? What's on your mind? I've been watching the trial. I know. I saw you there. Where's your husband? Well, Danny. In Chicago. Taking a big chance, isn't he? What if you get lonesome? As a matter of fact, I am. I don't handle that kind of work these days. Oh, Danny and I aren't married. Not married? He had it out that same night. I didn't love him. I was just trying to use him to cut out something that was hurting me. It was no use, Matt. It still hurts. Maybe I can help. Better? That Manetti touch. They'd only let you kiss the jury. Huh. I've got a call to make, baby. I'll pick you up in an hour. Important. Very. Not tonight. Can't be. Call it off. I can't. What's it about, Max? Business. Nothing to worry. Uh, I'll drive you there and wait for you. No, I'll take a cab and meet you later at your place. I'm driving you. Period. Come on, then. He's going there tonight, Tony. He may be there now. How do you know? I know. He's going to try to bribe that woman on the jury. Maybe he'll get away with it, Joe. Maybe not. Give me the police. You are listening to a radio adaptation of another famous screenplay from the Broadway Playhouse. We'll proceed with the next act after a brief intermission. It's a very curious fact that the international communists are using the word freedom in their propaganda. By using the word freedom in describing the advantages of their form of government, the communists probably have taken their cue from a children's book entitled Through the Looking Glass. In this nursery tale, if you can recall, it was Humpty Dumpty who said, when I use a word, it means just what I choose it to mean. With all of their Humpty Dumpty double talk, the communists have changed the word freedom to mean just what they want it to mean. But once the international communists actually take over a country, the very first things they deny to the people are freedom of speech and freedom of the press. The Iron Curtain falls and the people lose their voice. In losing freedom of speech and freedom of the press, the individual loses the rights and the dignity of man and becomes a dumb animal. He must, for to speak out against the restricting measures imposed by the communist leaders would be treason. So one by one, the freedoms quietly disappear. All protests are locked within the sullen hearts of the silent people who have lost their freedom. In our American democracy, we have learned that 
freedom of man begins with freedom of speech and freedom of the press. In our American democracy, we have learned that freedom is everybody's business. Here again is our producer, Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on Act Three of House of Strangers, starring Anne Baxter as Irene, Richard Conti as Max, and Thomas Gomez as Gino. <laughs> In a large, empty house, Max Manetti sits in the living room, his eyes fixed on a portrait of his father, his mind far back in the past, back to a time when his father was fighting for his freedom, back to a night when Max did what he thought was the only thing left to do. May I come in, Mrs. Jensen? Why, you? You're Mr. Manetti. But you shouldn't be here. You know I'm a member of the jury. Not much of a place you've got here. Especially for kids. This is the best I can do since my husband died. I've never done this before. Do you believe me? Yes. Sending my father to prison isn't going to make this a better world. What are his chances? I can't tell you. I'm under oath. You're a good woman, aren't you? A good mother. I try to be. How much do you make a week? Thirty-two fifty. Here. This envelope. For you. Take it. No, I can't. I won't. Who would it hurt? All right for your children, then. Oh, please go. Please and take this back. I don't want it. Well, I... I tried. You must love your father a great deal. I'm all he's got. Good night, Mrs. Jensen. Huh? Yeah. I'm on the district attorney's office. You Max Manetti? That's right. You're under arrest. Max Manetti attempts to bribe juror. Son and dad of a jury fix father gets new trial. Max Manetti gets seven years for trying frame up. Talk to me here. This is the visitor's room. The guards give you ten minutes. I come sooner, Max. Only I don't feel so good. You should feel fine. You beat the rap, Pa. You're a free man. What good to be free, Max? I got nothing to do, nowhere to go. How's the new bank coming along? Your brother's bank, not mine. I give to Mama. Mama sign everything to them. But it's just in their name, that's all. It's just a way to protect the assets. No, in case... no, it's a way to throw me out. Joe say, I'm an old man now. He say, go sit in the park, he says. Buy peanuts to feed the pigeons. He steal the bank from me, Max. I'd like to sit in the park and feed the pigeons. Uh, you think? Feel the sun on my face? Get up, walk around when I want? Instead, you stuck in prison here like a rat in a trap, huh? Max. Who put you here? The sovereign state of New York. No, no, your brother Joe. Your brother Joe, go call the police that night. Oh, you're all mixed up, Pa. Even Joe wouldn't do a thing like that. When you go see the lady that night, who knows about it? You and the Joe. Nobody else, huh? When you come out, the police wait for you. Who else but Joe? Besides, someone tell me it was Joe. Someone who hear him talk. Who? Who told you? Maria, she also asked me to give you this Max engagement ring. She cry. Maria gonna marry Tony now. Tony, new vice president at bank. Pietro, too. <laughs> Not bad. You don't let them do this to us, Max. Someday you get out. We take back the bank. Everything they rob from us, you get back, Maria. I don't want Maria. When I get out, I want to forget the whole thing. No, no, Max. No, not forget. You got to make them pay. They steal from me what I work my whole life for. Sixteen hours a day. I do without everything. I wear one pair of shoes, one suit. I save for years. For what? The bank. The bank is of my life. Is of my blood. Pa, please. They kill me, Max. They take away my blood. I, I can't live much more. I can't fight much more. I got nobody left. Only you. 
You gotta fix them, Max, for me. You gotta do this for me. You gotta make them pay. Don't worry, Pa. They'll pay. Uh, Max. Max is uh, my son. You come to see me again, Miss Bennett. That's uh, nice. You sit down, huh? I was up to see Max yesterday. So, he's uh, all right. Uh, he feel good? What's that you're writing? Another letter? They open a new bank tomorrow. Me, they don't invite. They send Pietro down to say I better keep away. I write these things to Max. Why? I tell Max everything. Why? Because these things he must know. What do you use for ink? Just plain poison of some special kind. Isn't it bad enough for him? You want to drive him crazy with your letters? Joe, Tony, Pietro, Max hate them. I want he should never stop. What a treasure you leave to the world when you die. Four men full of hate. He's uh, my son's. He's uh, none of your business. One of them is. I love Max. I want him to love me, to be able to love me. He's uh, none of your business. Don't write that letter, Mr. Minetti. Don't send any more. Give him a chance. Stop filling him full of poison and hate. I don't want Max should forget. I write him today, tomorrow, every day. I don't want Max should forget. You go now. Go. Then tell Max about me, Mr. Minetti. Tell Max his girl hates his father. Tell Max his girl wishes his father were rotting in jail instead. Get out. You think of that sometimes, don't you? That you belong up there instead of Max. Get out. Get out of my house. Sleep well, Mr. Minetti. <laughs> Let's go, Manetti. The warden wants to see you. Hmm? What's up? You got an 18-hour pass. New York. What are you talking about? Sorry, Manetti, but uh, we got word your father died. You got permission to go back for the services. The funeral is over, Max. Now you go back to prison? Yes, Mama. Sure. I watch you today. I watch your eyes when you look at Joe, Tony, Pietro. Now you go back to jail and, and make more plans, eh? How to kill Joe. Once I have a husband, Max, I give him four sons. Now I have nobody. No husband. No son. Go away, Max. Go That's about it, Pa. That about brings us up to date. Seven years in prison. And now I'm out. I went to the bank, Pa. I didn't stay long. Just long enough to watch them start squirming. They're worried, scared. That's good, huh? I could start with Tony. I could take Maria away from him. That would break him up. Take his kid away, too. The kid always goes with the mother. And that would leave Tony only with a job at the bank. The bank comes next. We'll start an investigation. Maybe even get an indictment with the grand jury. That'll take care of Joe. Elaine would leave him cold. With the bank gone, Pietro will wind up a bum in no time. Pietro, the dumbhead. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Pa? Never forgive, never forget. Well, I got news for you, Pa. Tony can keep Maria. Joe can have the bank. Pietro can have his vice presidency. Me? I've got Irene. I lost seven years with her. I bury them with you. But that's all you're going to get, Pa. Not one more second. Hello? Max, baby. We can still make that plane. Come and get me. I'm at the old house. What's the matter? Can't you hear me? Max. Well, say something. Oh, Max. Max, I'm coming as fast as I can. Well, make it faster, baby. Period. Well, welcome home, brothers. I'm glad you've come. I've got news for you. We figured you'd still be here, Max. Pietro, you know where the wine is. Get it out. We'll all have one last drink together in brotherly love. It's a pity Pa isn't here to see it. 
Huh? What's the matter? Gave us a bad time this morning, Max. My stomach's been upset all day. You need a new diet, Joe. Look at me. Hot as a rock. Seven years, no pastry. That's what does it. I like to sleep nights. Life isn't worthwhile if you've got to worry. Well, if you're worried about me, you can stop. All of you. You're never going to see me again. Change of heart, is that it? A change of mind, Tony. The vendetta's off. Just like that, huh? Who do you think you're talking to? You're no different than the old man. I'll never change, neither will you. I've got an appointment. You're in my way. Get him, Pietro. Pick him up. Put him in the chair. Yeah. Okay, Joe. Now, you listen some more, Max. We were all born in Mulberry Street. We can be tough, too. He can't hear you. He's out. One thing the old man taught me, when you got a guy down, finish him. That way you don't have to fight the same guy twice. In some ways, the old man was right. He's coming around. He's moving. Pick him up, you and Pietro. We're going up to the third floor. Joe. Joe, don't you think... We decided be... on it, didn't we? There's no other way. Pick him up and come with me. Over here. Over here to the balcony. Joe. I, I'm going down. I'll wait for you downstairs. Well, there's nothing I can do, is there? Okay. Wait down there. Throw him over, Pietro. Sure. You hear me? I said throw him over the balcony. Sure, he's had enough. You want to keep your job in the bank? Do you want to live? Then throw him over. I said over, dumbhead. Dumbhead, dumbhead, dumbhead! You too? You too now? What do you think you're doing? That name, just like Pa. You call me dumbhead just like Pa? I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Don't do it, Pietro. Let him go. No, no. But it's Pa driving. Pa wants you to kill Joe. Be smart. If you kill Joe, you do it for Pa. Oh, yeah. That's what he'd want. Let him go. Yeah. Don't let Max get away. Oh, stop him. No. No more, Joe. No more. Oh, he'll get us. Get us all. That's where you're wrong, Joe. So long, Pietro. Max. Hiya, baby. Max, your face. You've been fighting. You didn't... No, no. You don't believe me? I believe you when we're on that plane. Well, let's get going. Out of the jungle, Max. Out of the jungle, baby. Period. Mr. Keeley with our stars. We call our stars back for a well-deserved curtain call, and here they are. Ann Baxter, Richard Conte, and Thomas Gomez. You have just heard another adaptation of a successful screen drama with some of the world's most famous stars from the Broadway Playhouse. This is Tom McKee inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another great play from the Broadway Playhouse.